morning folks it's June 14th 2017 and I'm off on a road trip hopping in the car heading to uh, the university I did my undergraduate work at SUNY Oswego State University New York College at Oswego and there's a very big event that goes on one of those events that I'm really excited about each year it's an international gathering of high school students who uh, come and share their work their experience-based learning, their, uh, their various skills that they developed over the last few years working on various projects. And it's called the Genius Olympiad. And I believe the genius stands for Global Environmental Issues and Us. And these kids are brilliant and they're dedicated to solving environmental issues, uh, health issues, uh, global climate issues. Uh, social issues and they share with the visual arts as well and over 65 countries are are represented in this Olympiad so I'm gonna head there I don't know if I can get any video but it's one of those things that it's worth me living leaving the homestead fa uh, farm here to take take a few hours off to spend some time with some young inspiring young men and women from all around the world cool thing just got done judging uh, a couple of those <laughs> and really cool people and cool things and I thought I'd turn the camera around and show you some of the people I met. I have to apologize the audio quality was very poor however I should cover the uh, the competition actually covered many other disciplines other than the science certainly posters photography short films creative writing business and uh, robotics this is Aza from Tunisia and she uh, discussed how she was uh, addressing the problem with, uh, with water conservation, uh, overuse, droughts, disease. Uh, she really covered that very well, as, as did many of the students during the presentations. And uh, she wanted to create awareness by showing uh, an inexpensive way of using uh, simple computer systems, LCD monitors, flow meters to go ahead and make people more aware of their, their consumption and appropriate usages of water in their systems. So this is Kai from Vietnam, and he's creating an innovative approach to uh, solar hot water heating systems. A smaller footprint uh, as opposed to typical flat panels. He's using convex lenses, magnifying glasses, in a geodesic dome configuration to focus the photons, the solar energy, to a black coil within the center of the, uh, the buckyball, if you will, Buckminster Fuller's design and uh, use, utilizing a much smaller footprint of space in the environment and that seems to be quite effective. His presentation was quite good as well. I enjoyed meeting all of these young men and women. Now we move on to these two young women from the Russian Federation and their, their presentation was on a constructed wetland waste management, a wastewater treatment system. Uh, similar to the bioremediation systems you've seen on our center as well. And we move on to a couple of young men from Kosovo uh, with uh, innovative using solar panels attached to an existing drone. They had to modify the battery system and inverter. Uh, However, it seems to work quite well according to the, their research. These two young women from Indonesia uh, presented an interesting um, research project where they took a waste product, green mussel shells from uh, Indonesia, and mixed that in combination with a garlic extract and discovered various combinations, uh, ratios for tofu, meatballs, noodles, 
and uh, milkfish. Uh, the, each each uh, food group uh, required a different ratio of the green mussel shell to garlic and it worked as an eco-friendly, environmentally friendly and inexpensive way of food preservation uh, which was really interesting. I apologize for the poor video quality at this point. It's actually going to end in just a moment as you can see a, a woman approaches me uh, from the staff and wanted to see if I was willing to go back and judge uh, several other uh, contestants and I certainly agreed and moved on from there. However, I really wanted to make sure that I shared at least a couple more uh, wonderful uh, presentations that I can recall. One young man presented a very in interesting and innovative approach to uh, uh, reducing wind resistance in, the, in a, the design process for a vertical axis wind turbine. We're all pretty familiar with the typical uh, horizontal axis uh, wind turbines where it looks like an airplane propeller spinning around. Uh, however, there's some drawbacks to that, one of which is it takes uh, time and there's decreased energy production as the wind uh, direction changes and the vertical axis, uh, axis uh, wind turbine uh, eliminates that variable. However, there's been multiple different designs and this young man uh, envisioned the heart valves and uh, and how when uh, the let's say the ventricle is filled the valve opens and there's minimal resistance to the filling of the ventricle however when the force is applied and the ventricles contract the uh, the the valves close and there thereby preventing water for, uh, blood from flowing in out through let's say the aorta or the uh, or the pulmonary trunk and uh, so using this as a reduced uh, uh, resi air resistance system, over three years he uh, designed a system using uh, 3D printers and other various techniques and, and testing modalities to see how efficient his design system would work. It worked very well at low wind speeds and high wind speeds, but a, a median wind speed, speeds, uh, the system didn't work as well. However, using it as a, uh, as a hybrid uh, system with other vertical axis wind turbine designs, I could see this being a very uh, advanced way of improving uh, vertical axis wind turbine systems. So a couple of young women from Macedonia had a, a, a very interesting uh, presentation where they uh, conducted um, research looking at various ways of removing heavy metals from soil uh, that's contaminated, which is becoming an increasing problem worldwide and certainly a major problem in Macedonia. So zinc, cadmium, and, and lead uh, are all uh, heavy metals that we need to be concerned about. And uh, so they looked at using eggshells, uh, and eggshells ended up being quite effective at uh, extracting zinc, uh, uh, cadmium, and especially lead from the soil. And, uh, and they went through the various um, phases of their study and showed how well the, the, uh, there was a decrease in the heavy metal uh, contamination to the soil and how the plant growth improved significantly. So. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Another very interesting presentation was uh, performed by two young women. I can't recall the country that, that they came from. However, uh, they were looking at waste products in their environment and the two waste products that they were using were cow urine and uh, uh, mahogany seeds, uh, both of which are waste products in their environment. And, uh, and they were addressing a problem with bacterial wilt, uh, which is a bacterial disease. And using the combination of cow urine, which has been known for quite some time, urine has many nutrients and minerals in it, uh, which promotes uh, plant growth and plant health. While the combination of using the, uh, a bacterial, uh, the, the um, 
mahogany seed extract in combination with the cow urine actually was bactericidal or bacterial static to the uh, causative agent of the bacterial wilt which was creating a significant uh, plant disease process in their in their home of origin. So I absolutely love this because they were looking they saw solutions where, where both of these were waste products that were unpleasant to deal with and, and uh, could potentially create health risks, especially with the cow, cow urine. And they improved the growth of plants while also uh, decreasing the, uh, uh, basically a, a, a plant problem uh, using it as an organic uh, pesticide. Absolutely uh, brilliant uh, approach, very permaculture-esque. Well, folks, it's the next day. I'm back home at the uh, homestead, the farm, our little sanctuary here, Mindful Living Sanctuary. And I know this is, an, is not the typical video that I present, you know, but I find that the Genius, Genius Olympiad uh, fulfills a need that I have inside of me. Uh, it's very easy to become disheartened, uh, to feel all the sense of um, generalized apathy uh, amongst people that I speak with on a regular basis, uh, and feeling that, uh, geez, we've got so many problems, what we're doing to our soils, what we're doing to our, to our air, to our water, uh, how we're a consumer-based society how we're not working together internationally, uh, not combating issues like climate change, not really seeking to find uh, more holistic or uh, eco-friendly uh, solutions to uh, health problems, to uh, agriculture problems, to bioremediation systems, to energy conservation and uh, energy production that are more earth friendly and earth wise and uh, when I go to and judge uh, have the have the blessing the opportunity to actually go and see these young men and women from all around the world and they're very permaculture-esque they are are not just seeing the problems and saying oh my god the government or someone else has to deal with it they're finding solutions, and they're finding fascinating solutions, and they're taking a, a very good scientific approach to solving problems and doing very good research. Uh, it's just inspiring to me, and, uh, and I wanted to share this video. I'm sorry the video quality didn't come out that well. Things got pretty chaotic inside of the uh, hall, especially as it got close to noon, and some of the uh, presenters didn't have enough judges coming through and that's why I always asked if I was willing to go ahead and and uh, and take on more uh, presentations more of the uh, the students from around the world and uh, and I saw that as a wonderful opportunity so I didn't get a chance to take the video and and interview many of the uh, students who had done the presentations but I got a chance at least to share some of the topics it's uh, it's rather infectious when you're around these young people. One other thing I'll, I'll mention is that I asked them, you know, what they thought about the experience of this multicultural international event and how it was affecting their lives. And the sense that I got from them was this was a profound influence and it's going to carry with them. This experience is going to carry, carry with them throughout the rest of their lives. And this is what we need more of. Uh, so without making this video any longer, I wish I had more video footage to share with you. Hopefully next year when I go, I'll see if I can find someone else to come with me because they seem to be, everyone seems to appreciate the idea of sharing this information. And I'd really like to get some better video quality uh, to share and, uh, and do some interviews with some of the students. So I really need, to, I had made other commitments unfortunately uh, for the day and uh, and I had to honor those commitments but maybe next year I can step it up a notch and see if I can do a much better presentation of, of uh, and try to share at least a, an inkling of the experiences that I have there it's uh, it's just amazing I feel I feel charged up I'll be good all summer now as a result of attending that event 
So uh, if this was uh, of any way <laughs> valuable to you, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Uh, I really appreciate your comments and questions as well, and I'll get to them as I get the time, and I'll try to make some time in the near future. Well, thanks so much for watching, folks. Please like and share, if at all possible, and have a fantastic day. Think positive. Find solutions where you see the problems. Take care now. Bye-bye.